or you and I see God differently at different stages, different stages of our lives, different stages of our walk with him, we see him differently. He's a father. He's a savior. He's a king. He works in different ways. And so we see him differently. But one of the things we have to be careful with is because we get to see him differently doesn't mean that he is any different in the essence of who he is. And so you and I have to be careful as we are viewing God through our lifetime, we're going to see him differently in different places. And so there's something he's trying to teach us when he says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm immutable. I don't change. You may see me different, but I'm the same. This is going to be very, very important in this message. If I'm going to get delivered from the image, I got to understand that God does not change. He doesn't change. Look at somebody telling me he doesn't have to change. He doesn't have to change. He doesn't have to change. Why? Because God has already been in my past. He's in my present. He's been in my future. He's already set things in place. And when you and I build an image, that image's intent is to stop me while God keeps moving. We build an image, and the image's purpose is to plant us somewhere that God won't be after a while. See, God is moving, and sometimes in his movements, he does something real great at a particular place in your life. And if you're not careful, in that real great place, you will build an image and begin to worship it, claiming that this is God. Meanwhile, God keeps moving, and now I'm left worshiping a dead thing that is simply a picture of where he was in my time, not that God was ever stuck. Because when you build an image, you want God to stay the same as your perception is. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you build an image, you're trying to lock something into your perception. How many of y'all got some old pictures of yourself somewhere? Remember before you had gray hair, you got pictures before you lost your hair, before you lost your teeth, whatever you lost, whatever shifted, changed, before you gained your weight. Whatever it is, you got pictures to prove it, right? And how many of you, uh, uh, sometimes if you're not careful, you can get caught up reminiscing on the picture that's no longer you. You know, there's a, a, a very famous attorney in Pittsburgh who advertises on a lot of the yellow page books. He's usually the last page. And if you look at his ad, you say, man, this is a pretty nice looking youthful attorney. He's this popular? Until you go to his office. When you get to his office and this old man comes out, and you'd be like, this can't be the person. So why does he keep putting that picture up? Because he believes that if you saw what he looked like now, you might not be as inclined to call him. So he's not selling you his legal services. He's selling you his image. And a whole lot of us have bought an image, didn't purchase, so we thought what was coming with it. But trust me, if you buy the image of Satan, you are missing what he's really giving you. Because the image is intended to attract your attention. The image is intended to get your interest. Remember, she was fine. She was a brick house. She's mighty, mighty, letting it all hang out. 36, 24, 36. Pow, bang, boom, boom, pow. All <laughs> it's all over the place. <laughs> And little did you know, she was also crazy. 
God wants us to be like him, but he's a moving target. God wants me to be like him, but he's a moving target. God's not going to stay still and say, be like me. He's a moving target. If you're going to be like God, he's a moving target. So I said, well, Bishop, what's that mean? I'm going to help you. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. And uh, then we're going to start just giving you some things to just help us so we can finish this installment today. 1 Corinthians 11 and 1 says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Did y'all hear the word followers? Does that sound like stopping? That sounds like there's going to be movement in your walk with Christ. Don't get stuck nowhere. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't get stuck nowhere. God is going to be moving, moving, moving. He's going to be moving. And you're going to walk with God, you got to keep it moving. Hello? You're going to lose friends, but you can't stop. The only reason why losing a friend makes you stop is that you got an idol and not a friend. See, the reason why I can't keep moving is because I made you an idol in my life. Hello? Y'all ever seen people, I mean, people die, and it's a fact of life, and nobody likes to see nobody die. But when you come to the funeral and people climbing in the casket with the dead people, I say close them in there together and see if they really want to be in there. You really want to go with her? Fine. Go on in there. <laughs> we going to close. No, I changed my mind. So in other words, I'm going to play the role when I'm around you. And when I'm around this person, I'm playing a different role. But here's something that God didn't want me to do. He doesn't want me playing the roles that people have said is the image. He wants me to be in relationship with God and let the Holy Spirit tell me how he wants to direct me individually. In other words, there's something that might be good for one of us that ain't good for another one of us. One of us, he may say, you can go. The other one, he'll say, I know you. You don't need to go. But God's not going to pass a law and tell all of us, stay out of Heinz Field. Christians have no business going to the Steelers game. Don't preach that. Just say God told you to stay home. Because he knew you'd be down there drunk, betting, and falling out in the floor. Me, I'm going to sit in my seat and enjoy the game. He ain't telling me to not go because he told you to not go. We have got to stop preaching as the will of God stuff that God told us. Hello? Saints don't date. Maybe you should. Maybe God told you not to. Saints shouldn't be. No, if you're single, you shouldn't be talking to nobody until you're married. Don't talk. Don't even, don't even look at them. Matter of fact, when you hug people, don't you even hug. No, no. God just know how much lust is in you. So he told you don't touch nobody. But you can't pass a law on all of us because of something God's trying to work out in you. Hello? I never drank. I've never taken a drink in my life. But after pastoring and reading the word of God, I had to stop preaching that it was wrong for people to take one. Because the Bible didn't give me a mandate to be able to say to everyone, you shouldn't have a drink. Because that would mean you shouldn't have a drink of wine, you shouldn't have a drink of... Because in the Youngblood household I was raised in, we never tasted alcohol whether it was wine or whatever. But I'm not going to stand up here on Sunday morning and get on my Youngblood-isms and say that it's the will of God. Now, some of you need not even be anywhere near the smell of alcohol, let alone drink some. You smell it, you ought to start running. Oh my God, I'm out of here. But how many of you know the Bible says this? To them that are pure, all things are pure. Now what is he saying? If you can go into a place and maintain your purity, God can send you. 
But if sending you into this place is going to produce idolatry in you, God ain't going to send you. He loves you too much. Hello? I sent teams out to evangelize here in Homestead many years ago, and a group of them went down to one of the bars down on 8th Avenue, and they was bold. They just stood out front and waited for the people to come out, and they was handing out invitations to the people and tracts and stuff to the people. And so the bartender called me on the phone. The owner called the church. He said, how would you like it if I came to your service on Sunday and started passing out flyers to our bar? I said, if you're willing to pass them out, I want you to come into the sanctuary and do it after my service is over. If you'll sit through the whole service, you can pass out any flyer you want. But I didn't send everybody down there to that bar. There was four people I sent, and I knew those four people weren't struggling with bars because you'd be down there claiming to be witnessing, and I, I, I just had to, they offered me one, Bishop. Paul said, I became all things that, to all people that I might win some. Well, with, with them rum and cokes that you got in them pictures on Facebook, I doubt you was winning anybody to Christ. You drunk, sister. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Holy Spirit wants to help you see how you need to live. The Holy Spirit is going to tell one of us, go. He's going to tell another one of us, don't go. He's going to tell one of us, you can buy that. He's going to tell another one of us, don't get it. One of you, he'll say, that dress looks nice on you. Somebody else, he's going to say, if you put that dress on, you're going to get prideful. Don't buy it. Hello? I'm talking about, he's not trying to get a set of rules that fits everybody. There are some things that only fit me. Hello? They only fit me. There's some things that only fit you. Number two, our image of others. What we expect out of others. One of the greatest quotes I ever read before me and First Lady got married was this. When a man gets married, he starts acting like his father. When a woman gets married, she starts acting like her mother. The problems arise because his father was never married to her mother. 